with good reason many desserts include alcohol in the list of ingredients. And today I'll spike for longtime favorites with either a fortified wine, flavored liqueur, or a spirit to contribute both depth of flavor and fragrance. We have Mrs. Mouse's Fruitcake, a fruitcake I've been making since I was a child. It is delectable and spiked. And we also have a wonderful plum and port crostata using a sweet port wine that just enhances the flavor of those Italian prune plums. And a rum raisin pie, which when baked looks like a piece of pottery. You'll go for this over rum raisin ice cream. And tiramisu. I think it'll be your favorite favorite Italian dessert ever. Today, on um, Martha Bakes. As a child growing up in Nutley, New Jersey, I have really fond memories of helping our neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Robert Mouse, make the most wonderful German fruitcakes loaded with candied fruits and nuts. And I have quite an array of such things right in front of me. History has it that some fruitcakes have lasted 25 years. I don't know about that, but uh, I have kept fruitcakes for over a year and they are only better than ever. So start with one pound of butter in the bowl of your mixer. And have the ingredients at room temperature for the batter. I have chopped the fruits by hand, according to Mr. Mouse. This is candied orange peel. This is candied citron. Citron's an unusual lemony fruit that grows in Florida. It's not really edible until it is cooked in a sugar syrup, and then it looks like this. When you chop it, it's so delicious. It's crunchy and, and sugary and a little bit hard. Golden raisins, candied lemon peel. These are sour cherries that have been dried, and these are sulfured apricots. You don't want to use the unsulfured because they're dark brown and they just don't look pretty. And then lots of nuts, two pounds of walnuts, and pecans, hand chopped also. So butter is creaming. Add two cups of granulated sugar. Have 12 eggs cracked like this, and we're gonna add the eggs one by one. Two. <laughs> Let each egg get incorporated into the butter and sugar. And measure out a half a cup of unsulfured molasses. Molasses is very sticky. I'll add some of the orange peel, some of the citron. All our beautiful fruit is now getting mixed in. Some of the raisins, the lemon peel, apricots and cherries. So now just pour this whole thing into a bowl big enough to hold everything. Some of the walnuts, some of the pecans, and now you're going to sift your dry ingredients right over this wet batter. Two and a half cups of flour and two tablespoons of allspice. Just sift that right over the top. And the rest is to be incorporated by hand. The rest of your nuts and all of the cut up beautiful fruit. So once it's all incorporated like this, then you can fill your pans. Butter the pan very well. Make a collar of parchment paper that's three inches high and put that right around the outside of the pan. This helps the cake rise and it makes a very pretty presentation too. Now this makes five six inch cakes. And don't forget to butter the parchment paper. Now it's time to measure into the pans. Each pan should contain about one pound and 10 ounces of the batter. Continue filling your pans and press down your batter so that it is of even thickness in the pan. So now these fruit cakes should bake in a 275 degree oven for three to three and a half hours. So these have just come out of the oven and while they're still warm, put a third of a cup of brandy mixed with a tablespoon of sugar and brush all over the tops. This syrup will soak into the cakes. 
and start flavoring them. And now for the fun part, decorating the tops of these gorgeous cakes. One cup of apricot jam and about a third of a cup of brandy. Stir this well. You want to melt the jam. So now just put this through a sieve. It smells very good. And the glaze is really serving two purposes, not only to glaze the top of the cake and make it shiny, but also to hold the fruit in place. And I'll press the rest in as I need it. So here we have very nice glaze. And we're only glazing the top of the cake, not the sides. And of course, you can pick and choose what you want to put on the top. So one pear on the top of that one. And, uh, oh, I think I'll do a piece of pineapple on this one with a little clementine in the center. And you can surround the whole thing with cherries and a border of perfect pecans. And then you glaze over the entire top again. And when the jam hardens, these will stay right where they are. And whoever is gifted that cake is going to be very, very happy. Making fruit cake is a wonderful tradition and a tradition that I think you should share with your family and friends. Enjoy. When there's an abundance of ripe, juicy fruit, I love making freeform tarts called crostatas. And I use a simple pat brise recipe, two and a half cups of flour and a teaspoon of sugar and a half a teaspoon of salt. This is a very good flaky crust and it works really, really well with a crostata. One of my favorites is a plum and port crostata made with flavorful port wine reduction. It transforms this very easy tart dessert into something sensational and you will love it. So just pulse the dry ingredients so that they're well mixed. And to that, add two sticks of AC cold butter cut into quarter inch to half inch squares. So just a couple of pulses breaks the butter up into nice sizes. And you'll use anywhere from a third of a cup to a half a cup of iced water. You don't want ice in the iced water. One piece of ice can just ruin your crust because it forms a little wet spot and it'll just break or ooze or do something bad. So never any ice. So pour the water while you pulse. And you might find pulsing kind of annoying, but it actually works really well because it avoids overworking. That looks good. You want to form the crust into two rounds because this is really enough for two crostatas. So just dump the pastry out on the plastic wrap. Without handling the pastry too much, press into a round, flat disc. And wrap well. And continue to flatten with the palm of your hand. That makes a very nice crust. So chill this for at least an hour. You want it chilled through and through, but not hard. And so now I'm making the port reduction for the plums. One and a half cups of ruby port and a half a cup of light brown sugar. Bring this to a boil and the syrup has to reduce to a half a cup. So for this particular crostata, we're using Italian prune plums. These are the dark purple plums with a yellowy interior that are sweet and sour at the same time. So we'll need two pounds. Some are freestone and some are not. Freestone means the flesh comes easily away from the pit. These are almost freestone. Roll out your pastry, which is chilled, so it'll fit nice and generously in a nine inch, preferably glass pie plate like this. And I always like to spray with a little vegetable spray or even just a little bit of butter uh, the pan for crostata especially because they tend to leak and get a little sticky. This is a nice pastry rolling out very well right away, which is a good sign. And notice I'm really rolling in one direction, trying to get a nice even round, moving my pastry around and lifting it up off the surface. Okay, so to make it easier to pick up, you can just roll it over your pin like this and working quickly, lay it on your dish. 
right into the freezer if you're going to be making the tart in the next 15 minutes or so, or into the fridge if you need a half hour or so. So here is our beautiful reduced port wine. Oh, it looks so good. Pour that right over your fruit. So port wine is a nice, sweet, fortified wine. It's made by adding grape alcohol to red wine while it's fermenting. Stir that into your prune plums. Add three quarters of a cup of light brown sugar to keep those juices from running over too much all over your oven. Add a fourth of a cup of cornstarch. This will thicken those juices. And a teaspoon of salt and a quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon. What a rich and delectable filling. And here it is. It's already gotten just a little bit stiffer. And pour your filling right into the crust. This should be just about the right amount. Even out the layer of fruit. Carefully turn the crust up over the fruit. I like to kind of ruffle it, keep it rustic. And the more sort of little pleats and gathers, the prettier it is. And now brush the exterior of the crust with heavy cream. So now work quickly because everything should be cold. And here we have sanding sugar. It's really pretty to put on the crust and the crunch goes well with the soft fruit. Get that right into a 400 degree preheated oven and bake for 30 minutes. Then reduce the heat to 375 and bake for another 45 minutes or so until the crust is golden and the center is bubbling. This crostata has cooled on the rack and it's still warm, but really does look rustic and delicious. You'll be looking forward to Italian plum season as much as I do. Enjoy. If you find yourself frequently reaching for a pint of rum raisin in the ice cream aisle, you're going to love this recipe for rum raisin pie. A silken vanilla rum custard and plump golden raisins. Fill a flaky crust for a new take on a delicious combination. So I'm just finishing rolling up a half recipe of our pâte brisée. Fit this right into a pipe plate, preferably glass. And don't let it get too warm because you will not be able to flute the edges beautifully. This can get right into the freezer just to stiffen up a little bit. So, and I think I have one in the freezer. So here is our chilled and nicely fluted pie shell. Have your oven preheated to 425 degrees. And now we have to blind bake the pie shell. You can crumple up your square of parchment. You could lay it in the crust, but it really helps to do this crinkling because it stays better and flatter in the crust. And then fill with whatever weights that you use. These are green peas, split peas, that we use as pie weights. So once you fill the crust with your weights, put it into a preheated 400 degree oven and bake for about 15 minutes. Remove the weights, reduce the temperature to 375 and bake until the whole crust is a beautiful golden brown. That takes another 15 to 20 minutes. Now I told you this was a delectable tart and it is. The custard is so silky smooth and delicious. So you have four eggs and two egg yolks. Whisk these up. At the same time, heat three cups of heavy cream. Uh, you have to really kind of scald the cream. And two thirds of a cup of sugar. And a little bit of salt, like a quarter of a teaspoon is fine. And mix this up until the sugar is dissolved. When the cream is not boiling, but just starting to simmer, then it's ready to incorporate into the egg yolks. And we will be tempering the eggs. Very nice. We don't want to cook the eggs, so tempering means putting a hot liquid slowly and carefully into the eggs to bring them up to temperature without boiling them. If you just threw the eggs into hot cream, they would curdle. 
So this is tempering them. And now this whole mixture can go right back into the pan. Moderate the heat so that it's not too high and will allow the custard to thicken naturally. The eggs really act as a thickener. And you can just keep whisking until that custard coats the back of a wooden spoon. Now this is what our crust looks like. It's cooled, but what a beautiful crust. And notice, a well-made crust can lift right out of the dish, has no holes in it, no cracks, and because it's rum raisin, you need one cup of fresh golden raisins. Try to get a really good quality raisin and sprinkle them all over in one even layer all over the bottom of the crust. Now, isn't that surprising how nice and thick this custard is? And this is what I mean when it coats the back of a wooden spoon and a finger drawn through, it stays separate. That's exactly the right consistency. And now, your quarter of a cup of rum stirred in, and this is poured hot into your crust. Very pretty right into a 375 degree oven until the center of the custard is set about 25 to 30 minutes. So this is what that gorgeous rum raisin pie looks like. And slice it, cool it first of course, but then slice it into generous slices. Lift this out. It holds its shape really nicely. Some whipped cream. This is a must-have recipe for all you rum and raisin fans out there. Some people say tiramisu has been around since the days of Michelangelo. That's the 16th century, and its name means pick me up, and it's been made with lady fingers, biscotti flecked mascarpone, espresso, whipped cream, and last but not least, coffee-flavored liqueur. To make the lady fingers, not too difficult to make your own, and they're so much better than anything you can buy. So six egg yolks with 11 tablespoons of sugar. So let this beat up until it's light and fluffy. We also are going to use one and a quarter cup of flour. Always level. And in another mixing bowl, we have the six egg whites. And you can prepare your baking sheets if you like. We have drawn the width of the lady fingers that we want to create, and you'll need two baking sheets lined with parchment. So that's beating very nicely. And we have to fold the flour into the egg yolk mixture. You can use the machine for folding if you do it quickly. Otherwise, uh, use a rubber spatula and fold in the flour by hand. So I'm going to sprinkle and that's folding a little bit. That's it. So it's a little faster than with the rubber spatula. So now finish off the folding process with your beater. Just go around a few times. And into this, you're going to fold softly beaten egg whites. Sprinkle with one tablespoon of granulated sugar. They get nice and fluffy. The egg whites go from translucent to white and fluffy. So this looks just about the right consistency. You don't want to overbeat. And now lighten your mixture with a dollop of this. And amazingly, this does lighten. So now add some more of your egg white. Homemade lady fingers tend to be softer than the commercially available lady fingers, and I think they're just so much better. So that looks good. Now, the easy way to pipe this is, of course, with a pastry bag and half-inch round pastry tip. Fold down the top of your bag and fill with the batter. By folding down the top, it enables you to not get batter dripping out of the top of the bag. You can fold over the collar. 
and gather it, and pipe. Now, these are all going to be buried in the tiramisu, so you're not even going to see them. So if they're not absolutely perfect, don't worry about it. Make sure you preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Now, before these go into the oven, you must sprinkle them with powdered sugar. This forms a kind of crunchy crust on top of the spongy lady fingers. Now, if you're not familiar with lady fingers, they're a classic cake-like cookie used as an accompaniment for ice cream, mousses, puddings, charlotte russe, and other desserts. They're also known as the Biscuit de Savoie, which is the Savoy biscuit. Let the lady fingers sit out for about three or four minutes and into the 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes. And now for the final assembling of the lovely tiramisu. You'll need some biscotti or some amaretti. Grind them up in a food processor. That's good. Gives that little crunch in the tiramisu. And then to a pound of mascarpone, you will add one cup of sugar and eight large egg yolks broken up. So stir this up. And now sprinkle in your cookie crumbs, ground up. And now your egg whites, just make sure that they are nice and fluffy. And fold those in. These are the eight egg whites from the eight egg yolks. And finish folding the remaining egg whites. So this is ready. Our lady fingers are ready. This is freshly made cooled espresso. And to this espresso, add two tablespoons of a coffee liqueur. And you're going to be soaking these quickly in the coffee liqueur. What you want is this whole surface covered with your delicious lady fingers. Now, spread a layer of the mascarpone. Spread it carefully in an even layer and it has that lovely color from the biscotti. Now, another layer of the lady fingers. And if you love coffee, you're going to love this dessert. So spread this all over the second layer. And when did you say you were having that dinner party? This is the dessert to serve. And you're gonna to top it next with a layer of beautiful fluffy whipped cream. Flavor your whipped cream with a tiny bit of confectioner's sugar and about a teaspoon of vanilla. Tastes very good. And then just swirl it on top. And this must get right into the refrigerator to be chilled for, oh, several hours and preferably overnight. Now the last gilding of this beautiful Italian lily is a fine grating of milk chocolate. Would you like to see what it looks like? Generally, you can actually see the layers of the filling and the lady fingers. This might just be everyone's favorite Italian dessert. Give it a try. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of Martha Bakes. In a small saucepan, combine a half a cup of dark brown sugar and a half a cup of light corn syrup. Cook, stirring over medium heat until the sugar has melted, about five minutes. Remove from heat and stir in one tablespoon unsalted butter and a quarter cup each of dark rum and both golden and dark raisins. Serve, pour it over your favorite ice cream.